Lord, you said you'll call upon me in the day of trouble, and I'll answer you, and you'll glorify me. Psalms 50, verse 15. So, Lord, if we call on you in an hour of trouble and need, and you said you would answer, and we'd glorify you, it makes sense to me before we ask, and while we're asking, you've already made the promise that you would answer. So it seems right and appropriate to me to go ahead and do the glory in. Oh, somebody ought to give him glory before the pain leaves. Somebody ought to give him glory before your children saved. Somebody ought to give him glory before your spouse finds Jesus. Somebody give him glory, praise him on credit, do it in advance. Because he said, I'm going to answer you. I'm going to move for you when you call on me. Hallelujah. And he said, you'll be heard glorifying me. So if it's that sure, if he's going to do it, you ought to go ahead and glory on credit. Give him praise, glory, glory, glory in the Lord. Oh, Luke 17, 12 through 19. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men that were leopards. Leprosy in that day was the same as having cancer or some fatal disease. Hey Amen. The diagnosis was uh, you don't have long to live. Get your house in order. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, uh, praise God, that there met him 10 men that were leopards which stood afar off. It was their custom. This disease that was contagious, uh, you got to stand away off. You're not even allowed to get close to anybody. Hallelujah. Amen. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, uh, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass as they went, uh, they were cleansed. Uh, somebody shout, It came to pass uh, as they went. Uh, as they moved according to the word that he gave them hallelujah to make a move amen they were healed somebody shout as they went they were healed they were delivered of this disease incurable called leprosy in this day and at that time amen verse 15 and one of them somebody say just one out of ten when he saw that he was healed turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Somebody shout he turned back and he glorified God. Hey man why? Because when he saw he was healed he was so filled with gratitude he thought man I'll go show myself to the high priest as God gave to Moses a commandment to do when a leopard was to be cleansed that was what they were to do to show yourself to the priest was to come and show yourself to the priest after you'd already been cleansed so when Jesus said go show yourself to the priest, hey man he was a and you're already healed. Hallelujah. And every one of them, as they went, they were healed. And don't you know the other nine experienced their healing the same way as this one did? Every one of them felt the change. Their skin was changed. Somebody say supernaturally. They were healed miraculously at that moment as they began to move by faith according to the word that Jesus spake to them. But friend, tonight only one of them got whole. Ten of them got healed. Hallelujah. But one of them got whole out of the ten. In other words, nine got their healing. Oh, glory to God. But only one got made whole. Praise God. Because that's the one that says, my God, I got to turn back because this leprosy kept me from getting close to him. But it didn't keep him from getting to me. And he has healed me. And I'm so filled with thanksgiving. How in the world can I run on to the priest and say, look here, I'm healed without turning to the one, the high priest and praising him and giving him glory. Somebody shout he had a turn back praise. He had a turn back thanks. Hallelujah. Somebody shout real glory in, in God. Real praise to God. Real thanks to God comes to God. It don't walk away from him saying, thank you, Jesus. I highly appreciate you doing that. See you when I got another problem. No real thanks. Says I got to come to him. I got to fall down at his feet. I got to live for him. I got to be where he's at. It ain't enough to just know he gave me a miracle. Hallelujah. I want him. I don't want just his miracles I, I gotta have him master hallelujah glory to God 
And somebody shouted, he did it with a loud voice. Praise God. Next time you read that, you ought to read it this way. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Look at your neighbor and say, if I get too loud for you, it's because of what he's done. I can't keep quiet. Look at your neighbor and say, next month we're going to be singing silent night, but we ain't going to get silent in the night. Come on, somebody. How in the world was that a silent night? Angels singing from above. Praise God. Hey, somebody shout, he got loud about Jesus. He got loud about the miracle Jesus he had experienced. Verse 16, and he fell down on his face at his feet. Oh, here's them other nine, Brother Michael. Dust is kicking up. Oh, they're taking off them old leopard clothes. Their skins are healed. And all they can talk about is they're healed. They're going to show themselves to the priest. But one says, I'll be the last one to get to the priest. But I'll be the first one to get to the high priest. Because I'm going to go fall down at his feet. I got my greatest miracle. It weren't healing from leprosy. It was to get to see him. What kept me from getting close to him now is out of the way. And now I can get to where he is. He's my greatest miracle. Hey, man, the Bible said it fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Somebody said, "Uh uh-oh. We remember Samaritans dealing with Jews from John chapter 4, the woman at Jacob's well. She couldn't hardly believe that Jesus was even wanting to have anything to do with her because he being a Jew and she being a Samaritan. What have the Jews do with the Samaritans? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So uh, here it was. Uh, he was a stranger. He weren't even of the commonwealth of Israel. He weren't even a Jew. But somebody shout, there's no respect to person oh because Jesus ain't religious if you'll believe him he'll touch you if you'll believe him he'll enter your life if you believe him he'll deliver you if you believe him he'll use you he don't care if you're male or you're female whether you're black white red yellow white you're all precious in his sight so I say white twice maybe I forgot out of wanting to red hallelujah brown it don't matter pink polka dot come on somebody with purple pin stripes it don't make no difference hallelujah because Jesus ain't religious he don't look and say look over their church door. Look at that denominational name. That's the only place I can go today. No, he don't. He's not denominational. I know I just busted somebody's bubble off of that one, but he's not. Hallelujah. He died for us all. He wants us all. Somebody shout. Don't nothing keep him back from those that'll believe. Not even a different nation. Mm. He gave him thanks. And Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Jesus said, didn't I heal ten? Where are the nine at? So I said, where are the nine? That's why I couldn't call off our thirsting for God Thursday. On this fourth Thursday of November, Thanksgiving night. Because you can be thankful for the turkey. Thankful, Thankful for the dressing. And by that afternoon, thankful for the Rolades and the Maylocks. In John's Oval Office. His baptistry. I saw him earlier. He looked a little flushed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. It's a message. Praise God. You can be thankful for the clothes you have. You can be thankful for the family you have. You can be thankful for the job you have. You can be thankful for all the blessings you have. And that's a great attitude of gratitude. But you can be thankful and still not give thanks. Because thanksgiving is directed to one God Almighty. Somebody shout to God. So if you ain't gave him the thanks, you could run like this nine away from him. Talking about the glory to God, I'm thankful that God did this. I'm thankful that God did that. That ain't thanksgiving to him. That's just you're thankful what he did. But this one, hallelujah, turned back out of the ten and fell down at his feet and gave him glory and gave him thanks. That's thanksgiving. Come on somebody that's why 
How dare could I even omit? Tonight, when this is what it's supposed to be about to begin with, giving him the thanks. Somebody shout, there's a wholeness that comes. They were all cleansed, they were all healed, but this one got whole. How do you know? Because it says so. Jesus said in verse 18 of Luke 17, there are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And amazing, Jesus said glory to God, therefore calling himself God, because he is. He thought it not robber to be found equal with God. Amen. Philippians 2 verse 9. Somebody say God in the flesh. Jesus. He said this stranger. He was talking about him being a Samaritan. He's not even a Jew. He's returned to give me praise. That makes me wonder about the other nine. They may have been Jews. You'd have thought they'd have known how to praise. Let's get common with it. That was the church crowd. It took a stranger to show us how to really praise him. Sometimes it takes a stranger because the holy becomes common to some of us sometimes that are accustomed to doing this. Sometimes our praise, come on somebody, is just outward and don't come from the inside. And God had to use a stranger to show them how to really praise him. Somebody said, turn back praise, turn back thanks. And he said unto him, arise, go thy way. Here it is, thy faith has made thee whole. He did not say to the other nine, your faith has cleansed you. Though they surely had faith because they cried out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. But the only one he made reference to their faith was the one that come back and gave him thanks. And he told him, he told the one that was already cleansed, your faith made you whole. You know what that means? He never had leprosy again. There's a thanks tonight. There's a turn back thanks tonight. When you give it to him, the thing he delivered you from, you won't never have to deal with it again. Kind of like with Moses. In Exodus 15 and 13, God told Moses, you will not see this enemy henceforth no more forevermore. My God, Psalms 9 and 6, O thou enemy, your destructions have come to a perpetual end. Somebody say, there's a thanks a turn back thanks that causes whatever enemy that's attacked you or yours to not only be invoked, come on somebody, not only praise God to be evicted, but a sign of no trespassing put up saying you will not come back, you cannot come back. Jesus told the demons when he cast them out, come out and enter no more. My God, hallelujah, a perpetual end to it. That man never had to deal with that leprosy again. Now, I don't know about the other nine, but all I know, only one out of 10 got whole because that one realized the one that had healed him and he gave him thanks. He come back to him. God, there's people watching tonight that need to come back to you if you want to get whole, that means spirit, soul, and body, you need to come back to him. If you're under the sound of my voice, you need to return back to him. Because the man didn't just say, thank you, Jesus. He fell down at his feet on his face. That means he surrendered. You've not really thanked him until you've surrendered, until you've come back to him. And Lord, tonight we've come back to your house on this Thanksgiving Thursday to say thank you you be all the praise we've done as Ezra 3 10 and 11 says when they rebuilt the temple Lord God they took a break and began to sing praises and give thanks unto God as with one voice with one course Lord they had laid the foundation and Lord they put down their tools and they got up some praise and thanks and sang unto you by course and sounded like one voice because they knew if they had the foundation laid, the God they served would finish what he starts. Lord, we've come in here tonight to take a thanks break. 
<laughs> like they did in Ezra 3. We just come tonight on this Thanksgiving night, hallelujah, to take a thanks break because the God we serve, Jesus, he starts a work and he finishes it. Uh, if he's laid the foundation, he's gonna finish what it starts. Uh, be confident in this one thing, brethren. Uh, he that began a good work in you uh, shall perform it under the day of his son Jesus Philippians 1 6 God that just simply means you'll finish what you start hallelujah Whew. brother I just can't help it I gotta speak to you father right here God says I'm gonna finish what I've started hallelujah I will finish what I have begun and the way I say it to you is what I have begun. I will finish what I have started because it was I that gave it to thee. It was me that began it and I will finish what is mine. Some ought to say that sounds like unfinished business. Mm, I'm telling you, heaven ain't running out of business. Ain't going out of business. Heaven's in business. And if you're about his business, you take care of your business. Some I'll say your business. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you tonight and we give you all the praise.